and welcome back to a lovely sunny kooky corner of YouTube once again where I am going to oh hello who are you oh hello <laughs> uh, if you remember we did the the needle felted bear charm and I said to you that we would um, have a look at making a whole bear from the same technique that we used to make the head and here he is hi <laughs> he's a little bear who has got a little bow as well it's finished off with a little bow on the end there and what we're going to do today is make his body so if you want to pop back onto the previous video that i uploaded and find out how to make his head first because that is technically part one of this um, double uh, video. The first one is one in itself so it could just be that you've made the head and that's the charm that you want because um, we made it into a little charm that you can hang on your handbag or wherever and then I said well the next part would be us making the rest of his body and this is that part. So there he is in all his glory and we're going to, this is me in the future obviously because we're going to find out how we actually got here. Let's pop him down on one side, sit him over there. Okay so the things that we're going to need for this, um, for this session will be, you'll need your felting mat, mine is the clover brush, the larger version, there are two different versions, this one is the bigger one. Uh, you will need felting needles. I have got my clover felting tool, which is the three needle one. And oh, let's put that in the right way. Put that back on there. Also, a singular needle. So this is um, a 38 needle. You will need a longish needle with quite a large eye. You'll need some kind of matching coloured thread. This doesn't quite match him, but it's near enough. Um, in a thick, it's like a thick quilting thread, or even thicker than that. It's like an over a top thread. It's really quite thick and it's, it's going to hold very well because that is going to be for some jointing that we're going to do in this as well. You need some pins with a head on them. Uh, I like these ones because they are you can see them quite easily so that you can avoid them when you're needle felting. I use them for positioning when I am adding bits together and most importantly you will need some wool uh, to match the head that you made. Um, or have made because that, that is the first part of this. So wool to match and then you're all set to go in order to create this little guy. Ha <laughs> ha! So come with us on a journey and we'll end up with a little bear who will be able to sit and watch you as you work. <laughs> that sounds creepy doesn't it? But really isn't. He's very cute I promise and he doesn't bite. Okay, so for the body, what you're going to need is some roving wool tops, whatever, to match your bare head. And this one I've already rolled up into quite, it's not too tight, but a tightish oval shape, vaguely oval shape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to needle felt this down and if it needs to be any bigger, then I can always add a little bit more on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my tool, which is the three needle, and start to stab into it while holding it in place. If you want to keep your fingers out of the way, you can hold it with another needle just to keep it in place. What you want to keep doing is moving it around. I'll put that out of the way for a minute. And we're going to just felt this down until it becomes fairly firm. 
I'm going to leave the top a little loose. The reason being is I'm going to need a place to attach um, or a little bit of the, the wool left loose in order to attach to the head. Uh, there are two ways we can attach the head. There is the one where we uh, string joint it, which is another method that I will show you. But for now, I'm just going to do the simple way of attaching it um, by using some spare wool at the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue with this. I'm going to keep pulling these bits in until I've got a body shape, which is going to be a little bit um narrower at the top and a little bit bigger at the bottom okay so i'm gonna go away and do that i will be back very shortly with a shape and show you how it shall it felts down okay so i have my body shape all felted down i'm looking at it against the head i think it looks about right because again i will be working on it a little more but i want to get this attached to the head now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pins with a little bobble head, kind of position this on a little bit. Now you're going to have to be wary if you do use this method. I mean, you can hold it in place. It's just a little fiddlier. So with my pins, I'm just popping the pins in just to hold it down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my one needle and the loose um wool that i left at the top i'm going to try and felt in now to the head so i'm kind of going at an angle but i'm not wiggling around it's still going straight into the wall i'm going to work my way around i'm going to do the front and the back first and get all those felted in So I'm kind of going from the side, I'm going like a 45 degree angle uh, or a 60 degree angle. <laughs> I'm not a mathematician, as you probably have guessed. Uh, <laughs> but what you're trying to do is to attach the head to the body and on that occasion we can then work on the limbs to attach those on as well. You could do this separately if you wanted. You could do all the separate items. I just wanted to show you how it all kind of goes together. When you are needle felting around where you pinned in the pins, just be wary that you don't hit the needle. So take it gently. I do apologise for the shadows on here today. I have got <laughs> working in a um, sunny environment at the moment. So, going around, just keep moving it around, giving it a feel. I'm going to take those pins out now so I can assess how well attached it is. And it's quite well attached, but I'm just going to keep going just to get this in as i'm going as well it's still needle felting the base and sort of bringing in that neck area just to give it some shape you can see that so he is attached i'm going to still keep working on this trying to get this all in making sure that the neck is securely on to the head and it's kind of taking shape now you can give more shape to your body i'm just showing you a very very simple body shape there are all kinds of ways that you can experiment with this to get different body shapes to get that curvature at the back and that's all to do with sculpting with your needle but we'll be getting into that at some point i will be doing videos on um, a little bit more detailed advanced body shapes for bears but I think for beginners I think that's quite a nice shape to do it's kind of like a it's a bit like a hay roll isn't it when you start making it and then you just as you're working it it starts to take more shape 
So what we've got now is your bear and the body attached to the bear. Now what we need to do obviously is to make the arms and the legs. So I'm going to um, get my wool and show you how we make those. Okay, so I've got two evenly sized pieces of the fur, uh, the fur, the wool for the, the arms, which I'm going to do now. In order to get an arm shape, you need to stretch it out a little bit. So stretch out your fibres. I'll just do it on the one. And what we're going to do is a rolling technique. So tucking in and rolling but also leaving a few fibers loose because as I said there are two well there are more than two there's quite a few ways of attaching the limbs to your um, to your bear and I'm just going to do the simple method and the next time we do something I will show you how to do a jointed method I'm going to use my triple tool for this for speed so I'm starting to felt these together now. Rolling it around as I felt. Because you want to get, it's kind of like another long cylinder for this one. I'm doing the top end as well. Careful not to jab my fingers. And I'm going to Continue with this, keep rolling round. He's going to have some quite long arms, he's like a traditional bear shape. I also make um, mohair teddy bears as well. Um, we used to sell them a long while ago. Um, so bears are always very close to my heart. <laughs> and making them in different ways. I'm going to make his paw a little thicker at the end. a bit too bendy. If you wanted to make them um, movable you could needle felt around a pipe cleaner or a wire. I suggest a pipe cleaner because um, it's not going to poke through as easily as a piece of wire would do. Have a look at that against my bear. And what I'm going to do is kind of give it a little twisty so that it's got a curve to it. As I say, this is easier if you do it over a pipe cleaner, if you wanted to get that shape that stays in place. But also just as easy to do the needle like this. And so you're just getting that shape there. I'm going to felt some of this down here. Shape of it there. Obviously you can do whichever shape arms you'd like for your bear. You might want them to be a little shorter, a little stubbier. But this bear that I'm making here is quite a long-armed bear. I'm going to lose a little of this fluff off the end simply because we don't need that much. But it's better to have too much than not enough to start off with. I mean, you can add it in. So you will make two of these. You would make them separately. Um, I'd make them at the same time so that you can measure them against each other so that you've got the same amount. But for the purposes of this video and attaching, I'm just going to show you how we do this now. So I've got all those loose fibres at the top. I've got my one needle. And I'm just going to 
get all those loose fibers attached in. Making sure I've got some kind of a shape to the top of his shoulder. So these are all going in quite nicely. So you can do whatever you like to do. Have a look online at, um, at bears and um, teddy bears, traditional ones, and also artist bears, and you can get all the different varieties of shapes that you can make for your own bear. This is a really simple method with no sewing, well, <laughs> very little sewing. I think the only sewing that we've done on him so far is to do his muzzle, which we did in a previous video. You will also need to have a look at that one and I will link it down below in the description so that you can go and find that and uh, make the head. Okay, so we have his arm on and you will do another one exactly the same and it will go on that side, obviously. And then we'll be on to the legs, which is the next part. Okay, so what we're going to do now is to look at making his legs. I have done one here ready, and I'm just going to show you how I made that one. Uh, what you need are two um, even sized pieces of the wool. And what we're going to do is spread it out. And we're going to roll it. Now we're going to lead quite a long length for this one. The reason being is that a part of this will become the um, the foot, the paw of your bear. And so we need quite an amount left at the base for that one. So roll it as tightly as you can until you've got quite a long sausage. And what we need to do now is to start needle felting it. And you can add in, once you started to see how, um, how it's going to lie and fit, then you can start to um, add in any if you needed any extra. So get your basic shape down. And then if you feel you need to bulk it up and certain parts of it you can add in extra parts and I'm going to felt this until it's a long tube and then I'll show you how we do the foot this part here needs to be a bigger thicker part because that's going to be the part where the foot is made um, so tube down the length rolling as you go shaping as you go, shaping the top end in as well. We're still going to leave the ones at the top quite loose for attaching. Or I might even show you how to do a jointed thread for the, the legs. That might be an idea so that you can see both methods. We might just do that. In which case, what we're going to do is make sure that this is all nicely felted all the way around with no loose threads at the top because the jointed one is going to be attached by a thread and if you wanted to um, you could attach the head and the arms by that method but I'm just showing you two different ways of doing it so that you can choose which way you like the best. So I'm going to keep doing this. I'll be back to show you how to make the foot shape once we've felted this down. So I've got part way down now. I've got the length of the leg there. And what I'm going to do now is to have a look at this end in order to start making his paw. Um, the feet are quite big on this bear. 
So we need quite a lot of wool to work with. Bearing in mind, if you've got too much, you can always take some out. But I think I've got just the right amount here. We'll kind of just get the shape of his um, paw. Stabbing away. I'm not doing that part just yet because there's a reason for that and I'll explain that in a moment. So, trying to get the shape of this paw. In. Now what I'm going to do is kind of bend it. You can see I'm kind of bending it in and I'm going to try and felt that from the back just to get the shape of the leg and the foot going on and also into there because we want to try and get this foot shape on. If you can see on this one, obviously that's been felted down so it's a lot smaller uh, but we're trying to get that bend shape in. So what I'm doing now is I'm bending up the leg and then felting into it to kind of kind of hold that shape. If you can see now, that's kind of holding. And what we need to do now is to work on this to get that paw shape now. This will all flatten and felt in. And you can work on the bottom bit as well, work it in from the bottom so that you're getting all of those fibres nicely felted. And I'm going to work on this front part now. So obviously we've got quite a way to go yet to get this the same size. And all that is, is working with the felt, making sure that you're keeping that, that leg, that bend. And we're going to felt down to give that extra definition to the foot. So we're trying to aim for this. That's why we do both together so that you can get even, even felting and even shape on both. So I need to come in a fair bit with this one yet still. So I'm going to go and work on this one. You keep working on yours until yours, um, once you've got your first shape, then you need to match your second one to it. So that's what I'm going to do now. And I'll be back when they're both completed. Okay, both my legs are of even sizes. Uh, I'm not sure about my legs, but these bear's legs are. <laughs> um, I'm just trimming off some of the little floofy bits that stick up. But we want him to be quite floofy, floofy because he is a bear. <laughs> so two legs. Um, now we're going to have a look at our bear and see how they fit. Now if he sits down, that's quite nice. That's quite lovely. And they fit, they seem to look quite nice on him, which is great. So what I want to do now, we're going to do the jointed work on this. I was going to do the thread jointing. And what I want to do is just take in his body a little bit to give an indent where the leg will sit so that it kind of fits in and sits nicely with the body. Um, so if you can see now, kind of indented both those sides, that means that will sit in there quite nicely. And once you've thread, uh, threaded the joint through, that should also twist as well. So you'll be able to stand him up and sit him down. Um, so I'm going to get my needle and thread now and I'll be back in a minute and show you exactly what we need to do. So I'm back with my thread. This is quite a thick one. Um, it doesn't actually say which one it is. It's just a 30 meters, but it's quite a thick, strong thread. I think it's for quilting. Um, so you will need a fair amount of that. Chop off a length. And then what you'll need is a, a fairly long needle. So these are clover needles. And what you're going to need is probably not the longest one. Uh, maybe this middle one here. So what I'm going to do is to thread up my needle, which is easier when you've got a nice big eye <laughs> to thread it through. I'm doubling up 
my um, my thread so you need enough for it to be doubled and what I'm going to do is I'm just taking it through the body so I'm taking it through the bottom of the body where we did the indents and I'm trying to position it through the middle there and pulling it out of that side now that knot is now going to be hidden by the leg when we put that on the other side what we need to do now is we need to take it through the leg and then back through the body. Whoops, try not to pull that. Uh, she pulls that back in. There we go. So that we've got an attachment. I was just seeing if that swivels quite nicely. I think it might need to go up a little further. So I'm just going to take it back out again. So don't worry if you need to remove it. Um, it can be changed, she said. Just taking it back in again. Pulling it back out again. And pulling it back in. Ah, it's better. Okay. So then I'm going to take it back through the body, through the leg, and pull it. You need to pull it fairly tight so that that will move in and out. Can you see how that leg now moves? It's a jointed leg. So once we've got there, we need to get his other leg on. So we go back through, back out to the other side. The red on the leg, make sure I've got it the right way around. <laughs> the red on his leg, part way down. You don't want to do it right at the end, you want to do it part way down. Thread that on, pull that together, have a check, see how it sits. That's looking good. And then we're going to take that back right through to the other side again. And Pull it in. I seem to have got a bit of glittery thread in there somehow. I don't know how that's attached itself. <laughs> Probably from my brush, my felting brush. Okay, so now I'm going to take it in there. Back out again to the other side. Oops, wrapped it around this paw. I need to pull that in. Make sure they're still moving, they are. And then I'm going to lose this jointing thread into that part of the leg so that you don't actually see it. So I'm going to wrap it round. It's fiddly, but worth it. That's not actually going to wrap, so I'm just going to do it this way. There we go. Put it tight so you've got a knot. Take it back through, just take it back anywhere into the body and just lose it up there. And then you can snip that off. And now we should have a little bear who sits down. And there he is, little bear. He can sit on my hand and you can equally stand him up. His leg looks a little misshapen at that side, but what you could do is just alter that around with some some more wool just to make that a little thicker. But there he is, one little bear. Um, we will be doing some more techniques where we can join the head and join the arms, uh, but we may do a different animal. You could finish your little bear off by adding some little stitches if you really wanted to onto his paws. Uh, in the same colour as you did his muzzle and his nose. Um, and there he is, completely finished and very cute. Have an excellent day and I will see you very soon. Bye!